five to ten times more air with it. So what happens is that when this air gets forced over the top, it's high speed air and it sucks more air with it. And then this gas makes it so when these flaps and these flaps are out, this wing does not stall. The air is forced over the top with the help of this Bernoulli, Bernoulli principle that this wing, when you have to stick to the belly, you still have full controllability, you won't tip stall. And that's what makes this Helio a super, super safe aircraft. We take off on the bay, there's some boats in front of us, we get to 60, we can do a nice turnaround. We don't need to worry about the wing stalling and digging in and having a death spin right into, into the water or to the ground. So it makes this particular aircraft super safe as a seaplane because we've got these big floats, we got the drag of the floats, the steps, the struts. You say it won't wise. stall, it'll just sink fast. And that's as what we, to that's stalling. one of the key things about training, which Steve has flown three or four hours, Lyle's flown two or three hours, is that it's an incredibly safe aircraft because you have full controllability and you don't have to it takes a little bit getting used to, and it's also dangerous because you jump in one of these other airplanes and you try to turn and bank and you lower the ground, you can have a tip stall. So when one wing stalls, the other wing is going to fly around it and you have a death spiral right into the ground and below. You have no opportunity to recover. Now what we do have is a ton of drag. So although this gives you great lip, it secures the wing so we continue to have lift created on this top surface. What we do have is a lot of drag. So we got rivets all over the place. It's dirty lift, just like a big airliner with full flaps and they're their leading edge devices come out. It takes a lot of horsepower. So when we're coming into land with full flaps, our slats are out. We got these big floats and steps and struts and fly wires. It's a ton of drag. So we carry power all the way till we touch down and then we ease back the power. We pull the stick to the belly. But this little discussion the last five minutes shows you why this is a great seaplane and they're a little more expensive to maintain. Lyle is a good example. So we're going to talk about our kickoff procedures. And uh, you know what would be good? We can get another pilot up here, and I'll sit in the back and talk. So Lyle, since you've done this before, yeah, we're going to give our two new pilots to come up here. And then um, you can come up and videotype over the shoulder. OK, come up here. We'll just go through our, our takeoff and landing procedures so that we can go through it without the noisy engine. Steve Amoya, we're just going to go over this for the next 10 minutes, and then we're done. So I'm going to videotape. Good. Some more sections, and I can email them to you because we have one more class that we're going to go over. You know all the stuff like weight and balance and all the the, the less interesting stuff. And we're going to videotape our normal landings, rough water landings. I'm going to take him around and bring his girlfriends because he's going to get more girlfriends <laughs> with the seaplane. And you guys gonna, are going to go out and do that today? What I have is I have my friend who's an attorney, and he reads over all my documents for free. He's from Arizona. I taught him to fly 31 years ago. He drove in last night, and it's his birthday. His older brother was my best buddy. And when I had my leg surgery, we would build little gliders. We were 13 and 14 and flying them at Torrey Pines. So one of my best buddies from high school, we are having a picnic starting in like 20 minutes on the bay. We're renting and jet skis. Where are the so, so you're welcome to on come. Mission All bay you guys, we're going to have tons of food. Where? where? It's going to be right, you know, where that paddle wheel boat is at... Uh, oh, on Mission Bay. Okay. On Mission Bay. Yeah, you're going to be on the other bay. Yeah. But you can drive over and have lunch and take Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be on my Chill. boat. You're on your boat. All right. <laughs> That's the Bahia Resort. We're going to be at the Bahia on the green grass, and we're going to have several boats. But when the... That's all done at five. We're probably going to go flying because these guys are here two days, and they. And like, I, I just got a brand new CFI ready, so I can start teaching people. So I'm gonna put both of them. We're gonna come over and find you if you just circle a flag. Yeah, I'll let you know where I am. At, at five thirty-six, if you're still in the base, send me a text. Say where you are, and we'll come find you. Yeah. Especially. Well, just that thing is supposed to start at what time? So it starts at eleven. Well, it's 11 15 now. I know. They're already there. Okay, so maybe and I'll come go, straight over and just we're have gonna, a burger or something. You can come have lunch. Yeah. <laughs> they're there. And so, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to do um, three more minutes to show the sure. takeoff procedure. You want to come up? Sure. Now, if you have bad knees, it's an easier walk up the front. So, let me just show you. Uh, if you have kids, you don't want them walking in and out of the prop. But if there's no kids around, what I do is, is I use this because I have one bad knee. My good leg has a bad knee. My yeah. left. So I use my arms to help lift me up. So I just push off here and here, and then you can step on here, but as long as you 
take some of the weight on your arms. And so I, I just climb up on this, you can take a fine and I push up, and it's a little easier to climb than that. I do have a ladder for customers. Okay. You can scooch it, you can grab right here, watch your head, and you can step up on the two steps and grab that big bar. All right. I'm gonna grab him too. So I'm gonna put two new pilots here, just go through. So watch your head, you can grab this big bar right here. Okay. And we'll leave these here because then you can videotape it. Go ahead and have a seat. So you can videotape between them. So the Helio is pretty much like you know, the Cessna 185, the 206, it's pretty simple. We have most of the circuit breakers there. We have all of our controls over here. What I do if I'm on a deserted island and I pull out, these are our gyros, I even I pull out our lights here and I make sure our master is off and all these are off because I have had three or four times an engine not start well or something was wrong and then the battery went dead. How many times you had a dead battery trying to start a plane? A couple times? Yeah. You don't want to have that in a deserted place in Mexico <laughs> or somewhere. Now, we have a nice little jack here. We can get a car battery because this is 12 volts, but I typically will pull out all the electricity not necessary just as a safety feature when you're in a remote area. It's not necessary. No, you're not going to hand prop that thing. This is no <laughs> way to <laughs> I've tried. Have you tried? I tried. So all our circuit breakers are off, right? Mm -hmm. On takeoff, let me show you what's going to happen. Everything's in except our cow flaps we pull Sorry. open. Our fuel pump here we pull on. It's our auxiliary pump. And then we're going to check that our mixture is going to be in and all these are going to go in for takeoff. So that's our takeoff. Now on the bay, or around any boats, I also put on our flashing light, and that flashes, and it's a nice little feature because it's a little flashing light, and kind of people might figure out that you're taking off because your light's flashing. So here we're gonna go through an engine start, and uh, it's similar to takeoff. So engine start, our cow flaps are open. This is our, our alternate air. If we have an engine fail, we pull that in case we had icing. We do have a pressure carburetor. It does not get carburetor ice, but we do have an alternate source here. So for engine start, in, in, this is going to leave in. This is our, our throttle, so we're going to loosen up the friction nut and just crack it a little bit. This is in, oh, you're going to have to leave that out just for right now. So everything's ready, all these things are in, all those circuit breakers are off. So we're going to go ahead and start it as long as... Uh, you got your sign on the other side, you probably don't want to start yeah, it. Yeah, we're not going to start it, but let me just show you. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're not yeah. going to prime it, car. What, what we do is we pull this out and give it three dump some primer. If it's cold, you're in Alaska, you're going to do four or five or six, okay? So what we're going to do at night, we're going to put on our beacon, right? But this is our master and our, our generator. So that's ready to go. We got it primed, we got the mixture, we're all ready. We, we do test our fuel pump, that electric auxiliary fuel pump, we do for takeoff and landings. The engine drives a mechanical pump. As long as one of the two works, the engine will work. It doesn't get gravity feed into the pressure carburetor. What's nice about the pressure carburetor, you don't need to lean it. When we get above 10,000, we can lean it, and then we can burn you know, 11 gallons an hour for going a little slower, but nice. otherwise we just leave it in. That's cool. What's not good is it's like three grand to overhaul it. Yeah. He's off, okay. So that's it, we just hit it, and our little button is right here to start it. As soon as it starts, we're gonna look right here. The oil pressure comes up, we keep it at 1,000. If we're taxing, wanna slow down, we can go to eight to 600. If we're trying to go somewhere, we go to 13. After you get past 1500 RPM, when you look out here, you'll see water pouring over. The nose will kind of, the power of the prop will kind of dig us in, and there'll be water flowing across the pontoons, and then you'll be getting more water to pump out later. And if you tax it like that for 10 minutes, you're going to have you know 50 pounds of water in your floats, just because water gets in floats through the top. The air set, the brand new composite floats are better. These are the old. 50 year old designs. That's pretty much it. We have a takeoff out. This will be full. This is going to come out for takeoff. And this, everything else is in and our light on. If we have an engine out, we can check our mags here. We have fuel on and off. There's no left or right. Like a Cessna 185 206, you can go to the left tank, right tank, fuel pump on. But we'll go fuel pump on, alternate air source, and what you put the fuel selector on. So when I had my first side. Helio engine failure, <laughs> Crazy. I had throttle all the way back, it seated in the carburetor, it had a blockage, and, and I, I tried to restart. So I pulled this out and pumped it, and the proper brrrm, and I pumped it again, brrrm, and I barely made, you have, Elko has two runways, and I barely made it and landed across the runway and stopped before I went off. I went, 
completely perpendicular to the runway, but using the primer <coughs> got me another 100, 200 feet. And I glided right to the end of the runway and landed across it. The floats weren't on it, and I stopped at like 150 feet because that was just me and light. So that's our, our engine deal. What we do have very uniquely is we have our little uh, trim here, and you have an indicator here. So what I do is I keep everything on the left. If you are pushing forward, you're going to trim forward to trim it. Okay. So if you're pulling back, you're going to trim it back. Okay, and that nose gives you nose up. And you see the little indicator. These are our flaps. So on takeoff, we take off with 30 degrees, which is 14 turns. Full 18 turns is full flaps, and they're, they're big. You can see how big they are. When we're flying, we, it's really hard to put them down past 25 degrees unless you slow up below 60, the bottom of the wider. But the plane will not stall. You fly to 40 miles per hour and the flaps are kind of That's full flaps, they're pretty big. You've got a short stubby aileron, they give you bigger flaps, and they go back and down, which is a, a great feature for landing slow. So that's it, we, we're at our, uh, we're a little bit over our time. <laughs> we're doing another ground school next, next um, Saturday on the beach, and we're gonna go flying, right? We're gonna have a little ground school on the beach, and we're gonna videotape it, talk about launching from the beach, and we're going to do a, ta a slow taxi, plow taxi, high speed taxi. We're going to videotape it. So ground school, we're going to fill the plane up with five guys and just do our taxis and then come back to the beach. Which beach? We're going to be right near the golf course. There's a nice little golf course. Okay. There's very few people there. So, so how are you going to get him to videotape those type of taxis? Because I'm going to have a little boat and he's going to videotape okay, from the outside. Okay, you're going to have a boat. That's what I thought. First videotape okay. on That's the inside that. and then we're going to videotape from the outside. Where are you getting the boat from? So I have a friend with a little rubber dinghy, unless you have a boat. No, my dinghy's too slow, actually. And it, and it, won't be, it, won't <laughs> it happens when you get older. And it won't be available. <laughs>